It's Mnemonic and welcome to yet another video. There's quite a bit of information to unpack today, so I'm gonna just start this off with the Season 18 starting date. So the date has finally come and it is August 23rd, just as I predicted essentially. It's, it's the date that makes most sense. This will be on a Friday and it's also before the classic WoW release, which is on the 27th, I believe. So at least the opening weekend of the season, the new season won't be ruined because, you know, most people are playing classic WoW or chose to go and play classic WoW over the brand new launch of another season for Diablo 3. So at least there's that it's the best date that makes the most sense in my opinion so i do like that quite a bit alongside the latest diablo 3 patch right there so that means that on the same day august 23rd season 18 will be launching and patch 2.6.6 will be going live so they will be going live on the same day at the same time we won't get the patch a few days earlier they're going to be going live together Regarding the new seasonal team, they actually uh, changed the names around, I believe. I do not believe they had a name when they first announced the patch notes. And so uh, for the 100% damage bonus, they are actually giving the name of Trion of Love, which is the power right there. Uh, Trion of Determination is the resource cost reduction one by up to uh, 50%. So that's, uh, that's obviously really nice. And then Trion of creation is the cooldown reduction one and again it doesn't it still doesn't say by how much cooldown but to know that it gives you quite a substantial amount of cooldown reduction so yeah they actually named all three of these buffs the circles that will get on the ground essentially season 18 cosmetic rewards this is actually uh, worthwhile to read it out loud. Beginning with Season 17, we began reintroducing previous seasonal rewards to make them available to players who may have missed them the first time around. So essentially what that is, is the rewards that we're getting for these current seasons that we're doing. So Season 18, 19 after that, 20 for future seasons are going to be essentially rewards that we have already obtained through much older seasons that's basically it so some some of you might already have these i really do like that portrait frame or not the portrait frame the pennant by the way i think it looks really cool i do not personally own this or have this so i would be looking forward to getting this i think it looks really really dope and really uh, sort of um like ghost type looking it looks really eerie and i do like that obviously i mean it's a it's diablo so something like this is going to uh definitely grab my attention the portrait frame is mech for me personally but these types of things are completely subjective i mean it's all about what you find to be cool and maybe not so cool so uh yeah i'm pretty sure there's gonna be quite a good amount of people who are gonna like this and both of them so yeah but that's that's what we're getting for season 18 the sets granted by the hadrix gift in season 18 so essentially the free sets that you get from completing or for completing the seasonal journey at least up to chapter 4 now i do have a guide on this channel for completing the entire seasonal journey so all the way up to chapter 9 i believe is the last chapter so if you maybe have a little bit of trouble with that you can always check out my guide and i do recommend to actually complete all of it all the way up to chapter 9 because that will give you an extra um, stash tab essentially so I have a bit more space to play with especially maybe for future PTRs if you want to test, thing, test things around you'll have a bit more space for that so yeah I mean overall that's great and I feel like it's worthwhile to do so the sets themselves, Barbarian will be getting the Legacy of Raycor, which is great. I mean, Legacy of Raycor is the strongest build for the Barbarian. It has been for a few seasons now, so that's a very strong uh, start for the Barb. Crusader, Armor of Akan, not too bad at all. Definitely not bad. Uh, Demon Hunter, Embodiment of the Marauder, same thing. It's That's not a bad uh build for a demon hunter to start off with monk in as reach there's actually a variation for wave of light that uses the inner set so obviously that's going to be good as well a necromancer pestilence i do not need to say anything more about that that's fantastic a witch doctor with the zuni masses horn this is actually great as well um regarding this one right here i actually have already made 
a build guide for Nephilim Rifts, Torment 16 Nephilim Rifts, that utilizes the Sage's Journey and the Zunamasa's Haunt. So this, if you're gonna actually be using that build, this is going to be a very, very strong start when it comes to farming up the materials, the dead breaths, and also uh, considering the fact that we can now craft the Sage's Journey once you hit level 70 and then you'll get the Zunimasas as well, that's very very nice. Uh, it's a very strong, in my opinion at least, start for the Wish Doctor when it comes to materials and just being able to farm those higher rifts to get a better chance of getting more legendaries overall. So I really do like that for Wish Doctors. And then for the Wizard, Delzare's Magnum Opus, that's also a very strong strong start for Wizard. There's a raise. Uh, it does pretty good damage for sure, especially for a season starter set that's very, very strong, and it should get you into some pretty decent, decently high tiers in Diablo 3 straight away while you are trying to get the gear for whichever build you are going to be playing. So patch notes. Below you will find the patch notes for the most recent update. So these are the uh, updated patch notes for 266 and any updates made are going to be highlighted in red. So we can just take a look at that and see exactly what changed. Uh, they received feedback from players during the PTR about colorblind accessibility. Even for people who aren't colorblind, I really still like this change because two of the three circles were essentially different shades of blue, and now one of them is going to be a shade of green, which is going to be much clearer when you're in the midst of battle and action, and you know you're you're trying to identify whether this is a darker blue or a lighter blue. So okay, is this resource or is this cooldown? I can't quite see it that well. So, you know, just giving it a different color. I don't know why this wasn't done straight away, but at least it's been changed now, and that's great for me personally. Um, now, for the updated item notes, there are a number of notes below clarifying the intention of certain item functionalities. So essentially, they're going to be uh, sort of going through what these items are going to be doing and if they are working as intended and just making it 100% clear what these items should be doing and how they should be working. So Flavor of Time, new legendary power pylon effects last twice as long and this is a note for group play pretty much. Uh, only wearers of this item gain this effect. This is intended. So essentially if you're in a group and there's only one person, let's say a support monk, for instance, who's wearing this neck piece and they click on a conduit. This doubling of pylon effects doesn't go on every single person in the group. Only the monk will get uh, twice as long pylon effect. So that's essentially what that is. The executioner, new legendary power, attacks will slay enemies with less than 5 to 10% health. And this item does not work on followers. I've already tested this out on the PTR and it didn't work for me, although I was hearing some people who were saying that it worked somehow, but it didn't work for me and now they are actually clarifying that it doesn't work on followers and this is intended. And I like that to be honest, if this worked on followers, my goodness, I mean, not only would you remove all the options for weapons for the followers, the very little that we have, but on top of that, this is way too strong for, for a follower to carry, way too strong. Stone Gauntlets. This item now displays a buff icon and has a clearer in-game description. Thank you for the feedback. So people actually, you know, I've seen this in the forums. Uh, people were asking for these types of legendary powers to have some sort of a representation, a buff to show them that these actual buffs right here are working. So I am gaining more stacks of armor. Okay, I'm on two, three, four stacks of armor here so that you know much better what's going on here and where you are exactly with these items. So I'm very happy that they have taken your feedback and thank you guys for leaving feedback like this. It really helps out a whole bunch, the entire community. So thank you for that. And yeah, the buff is going to be going into the game, which is great. And also, the immunity to control impairing effects can work against the reduced attack and movement speed penalties, which is intended. That's also great. So they will be allowing players to mitigate these penalties right here. Movement speed and attack speed 
through the immunity to control impairing effects or at least uh, reducing your control impairing effects to the secondaries, which is going to be fantastic. Echoing Fury PTR update. This item's power now works on kill assists and pet kills. So yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, most people wanted this to work on hit and not on kill, so that didn't happen and it didn't change. Again, something that I did believe was gonna happen. I mean, I didn't really expect this to change on hit because that would change everything. It would be a completely different power, to be honest. If that were to happen, it would be so much stronger. And I feel like they wouldn't actually do that, although I'm not against it. Personally, that's not what I'm saying. I just feel like that was their intention, that this item will work on kill and not on hit. If they wanted it to be on hit, they would have probably done that from the get-go. And so I didn't really expect a change there. But the great thing about that is that it will work on assist. So if you're in a group and you're playing a support, you won't be killing anything. But given that you touch them at least and they die from the damage dealers you will still get that um that cooldown reduction or in this case that increased attack speed and movement speed and also pet kills so for builds who are essentially pet builds like the dagger of darts for instance for the wish doctor if you use this echoing fury now and pets are killing stuff you will still get the benefits so that's great. That's still very, very nice and a very solid change. Squirt's necklace. Uh, this item now displays a buff icon. Thank you for the feedback. So again, another one. These are all uh, essentially changes made because of player feedback. So that is great to see. Great job, guys. Great to see that. This item now displays a buff icon, which is essentially the same thing I just said about the stone gauntlets up here. So that's fantastic. I like those types of changes the more you show what's going on, the better players will understand and perform. The Message Mitz Reaver. This is the cooldown reduction one. Uh, this item's power now works on kill, assists, and pet kills. So same exact thing like the Echoing Fury right there, which obviously it's going to make it a little bit stronger. And honestly, more than stronger, it makes things more fair. Because if I want to play, play a pet build, I can still use this. These are very strong items, both of them, so at least it works on essentially everything now. Uh, Mortix Brace for those barbs. And nothing changed regarding this, but they did leave a note here. We're not done with barbs, so they, they are essentially telling us we know that this is not enough for barbs, this is not going to change much of anything, but we're not done. So, you know, calm your horses, there's going to be future stuff coming for the barbarians in future PTRs, essentially. That's what they're saying right there. And then after this, uh, honestly, we're going to be going into crafted sets here and nothing really changed. They kept all the crafted sets, all the values and all of essentially how they work the same, exactly the same. There's two bug fixes down here to make items work as intended. But apart from that, that's all of the information. If you want to take a look at exactly the time the season starts, there's everything down here. Uh, just match it with your region, whether you're from North America or from Europe or from Asia. Just check and match it with your region. But yeah, it's always going to be at 5 p.m. in this specific time for each region. And there's other clarifications right here in the FAQ section of the updated patch notes. But that's all of the information, guys. Thank you again so very much for watching. I hope this was useful to you. And until next time, stay safe, take care, and peace out.